Uh, scientist here at MIT and Sandy Pentland's group and I run civics.com um, consultancy. So uh, here's some um, here's some arson for the discussion, Mel. I think um, if you look at law, they're gonna just challenge us here to address the observable fact that we are way behind. Law is an information intensive profession. Why is law so very bad at embracing and using information as data and embracing the, the digital age? Law actually was the beginning of science. Um, we've had speakers in the past uh, that have, at the Media Lab, that have uncovered the history of how science, uh, the scientific method, really took off and became part of society. We want facts. Um, in public debate, we want repeatable science. The scientific method, if you look back in, in England, took its cues very much from legal methods, from identifying evidence, from um, the procedures to establish truth. There's a direct lineage here. Law is founded, um, at least the rhetoric and the, um, uh, the logical thinking from logic itself, from syllogisms. These, of course, underlie computation. Law, very much in the modern age, is code, as Sandy was alluding to, when we set requirements for industry, certification, tax code. Much of this is ought to be computable. Other people are forced to refactor it into their software and their systems. Why doesn't the law express itself as code to start with? So some challenges are, um, I think, for the practice of law. Attorneys and law providers need to under be able to understand the underlying business and technical context of their clients. They cannot shy from this. Be able to be conversant in the apps and the services and, and the, techn the technical context. We need to be able to adopt modern delivery methods and not um, and basically, so in everywhere else in the economy, I joined their Slack channel, on Telegram, we're collaborating on Google Docs or HackMD files. Why not the law? Why is it still locked in this almost medieval paradigm of, um, it might as well be parchment, although it's, it may be PDF, but it is, not, it is not born digital and it's not data. We need to be able to explore the power of tinkering on projects. It's not something for the paralegal to do. Someone else should do our searches on Westlaw. Somebody else should put together uh, document assembly. But the, um, when I used to practice law, I was fortunate to have a good boss, Ray Campbell, and we would spend a long time doing basically regex on mass general laws and on, um, on big procurements in order to sort and filter and search the underlying deal terms and make sure everything lined up. This is a tinkering project. Every good legal engagement could be like a hacking project to some extent. So some specifics, just to break it down, I'm gonna assert that we that in the law, let's move from a paradigm of looking at um, <clears throat> legal documents as though they're cuneiform and start thinking about data, okay? Um, so, like, uh, you can, like, I'm dealing in a project right now where all the contracts, like, more than 5,000 contracts are images of contracts. They're in a database, they're digital, they ain't data. You know, we cannot interrogate the terms, we can't sort, filter, search, we can't connect it to updates from some things from an API. Go from paradigm of document to paradigm of data. We need to go from uh, look, to looking at legal rules, we need to look at legal rules as, like, code and algorithms as software. Think about it that way. That is how it expresses itself in the modern world. And we need to look at practice as a kind of service, something that can express itself through an interface. So the big picture, I'd say, is um, um, let's have a think at, at my breakout table and what are the problems and prospects for practicing attorneys to, um, to embrace some of these modern methods. What are the drivers and inhibitors for the um, legal market for broad scale adoption of these modern methods? And um, what, and then the specific call to action is what will it take to express 
when we're dealing with data coming from clients and from other sources and we're providing services back, what will it take to begin to express that as data at an interface? What will it take to express our artifacts, you know, the, the, the legal memo, the opinion of counsel, the, the filing as a product that we deliver so we can start to conceptualize it that way? And finally, what will it take to look at engagements as projects that can be managed? These are, I think, some of the core dimensions and facets of what it's going to take to transition successfully in the law and for journeys into a digital age. So at, at the table, we'll look at some of this in particular. I'd love to brainstorm some basic vignettes of everyday law practice and everyday um, uh, legal processes and how they've looked you know, up to now, which is pretty medieval, and what it might look like if we took a page out of the diary of a lawyer of the, you know, five years from now, Robert Mahari, is just starting Harvard Law School. Let's not, let's leave him a better future and let's build that together and come up with some vignettes of what that would look like as targets to him. So, that is the spark. May there be fire. <laughs>